here to celebrate our um, exhibit that's in the Community Spotlight Gallery. And um, we don't have an end date for this exhibit yet, <laughs> which is fabulous. We can look at it a, lo a lot. And I just was upstairs again, and it's, it's still fabulous if you come there. Christina made a wonderful poster, and it is... Uh, and then I think I've said it before, but in July in Ormond is the month of parks and um, recreation. And uh, Siobhan from the casement asked me, oh, can we have your exhibit? And Christina was so nice to allow us to have a moving exhibit and we will exhibit this uh, whole thing in the casements in July. Of course, in, uh, at the opening, we didn't have a reception, thanks to COVID, but uh, now, thanks to Donna, we have a boatload of food, so please don't go. I mean, we need everybody to eat a lot. Okay. Um, on March the 15th, we had a field trip and we did a photo walk in New Smyrna Beach. And we stopped in Arts on Douglas and we saw Juliana's solo exhibit. It was her first solo exhibit. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we know Juliana because she judged some of our shows before. And um, I will give the mic to Juliana and she can tell us something about herself. Juliana, thanks Thank for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, I was really excited about this opportunity when uh, you told me about the local color exhibition that's upstairs. And uh, my work is really, it's all about the Florida landscape. So I think it's a perfect tie in. So yes. <laughs> I'm excited to talk about the show. Uh, and I'm also going to talk a little bit more about my background in photography, how I got started. Um, and kind of everything that I've been doing that really led up to this body of work. Um, to give you a little bit of background information about this series, uh, it started about five years ago when I decided to start walking on the beach for exercise and just to clear my head. But with my background in photography, I just could not avoid taking photos. Every little thing I saw, I took pictures of, and I was taking the photos with my phone because that's the camera that I had on me. So the whole body of work uh, was taken with my iPhone. And I also brought a couple images afterwards when the lights are on, you're welcome to take a look because I think it's important to see the printed image as well. So I brought a few images from the show that you can also take a look at. But uh, now I'll get started um, with a little bit of background information. So we're gonna go way back. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> um, as the daughter of a high school photography teacher, I was often on teacher duty days invited to, well, forced to <laughs> hang out in the uh, classroom with my dad while he was working on pro school projects. And uh, at this point, uh, he taught me, I think I was in first grade, how to make a camera, a pinhole camera with an oatmeal box. <laughs> and that just completely fascinated me that how little you really needed to make photographic images. It was just this magical process. So um, I just, I really loved it. So moving forward from there, when I entered high school, I went to the same school where, where my dad taught. At first I decided, no, I'm not gonna take your class. That would just be way too embarrassing. And then all my friends took it and I got talked into it. So I took my dad's photography class and I fell in love with photography. And, and I just found this article, which uh, I don't even remember, but this is a photo of mine. I think I was in the ninth grade at the time, and it was a juried high school exhibition that uh, I had work selected in, and it was featured in the paper. So that was a really good early boost for me, and kind of kept me my motivation up to continue it. And uh, I also started volunteering uh, here at the Southeast Museum of Photography uh, while I was in high school. And uh, back when it was in the, I think it's the administration, building now yeah. yeah so I spent my summers just surrounded by photographs and really just taking it all in so after high school I 
We fortunately have an excellent photography program right here. Uh, it was Daytona Beach Community College then, but I um, enrolled in the photo program. I had a part-time work-study position here, and I really enjoyed working in the museum environment. It was a great supplement to my education. I especially loved working with the permanent collection. I was lucky to be able to, I think they were rehousing a lot of the images into more archival boxes and I got to go through all of the boxes, maybe not all of them, but I got to go through the boxes and just look at all of these amazing images. And it's where I really learned to appreciate the quality of a, of a nice print. You know, looking at work by the masters like Jerry Ellsman or Edward Weston and um, uh, Edward Moybridge, just seeing all the different processes and I just was a sponge and I took it all in and and I really enjoyed it and it really had a big influence on my own photography as well. So uh, after the two-year degree program I uh, took a short break moved to New York but I came back to uh, do the bachelor's program uh, from UCF. It's the joint program so I got my bachelor's in photography and I uh, continued working at the museum Decided museum administration was really my passion, so I went on and got my master's in nonprofit management. And uh, I worked my way up from a volunteer and work study student to the director of the museum before I left. So I kind of did a little bit of everything uh, throughout the process, and so it was really wonderful. But then I moved on. I really wanted to get more varied experiences, and I just happened to uh, learn about position at Arts on Douglas, which if anyone hasn't been there, it's an excellent art gallery in New Smyrna Beach. It's been there 25 years, and I've uh, been exposed to a wide variety of different artists and styles, and I get to hang the exhibitions there, and it's just been a wonderful experience for me. So I'm just briefly going to touch on some of my influences. So uh, especially from working here uh, at the Southeast Museum, uh, I've always loved Edward Weston's work. and it's funny, this image that I put the slideshow is also on a, I think, a sign right outside the door. But um, just his approach to photography, the really simple, beautiful lighting, the way he transforms something as simple as a pepper into something else. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people see different things in it. And uh, I really love that, that crisp simplicity. Mm -hmm. And so the image on the uh, right is one of mine from uh, this uh, Coastal Impressions series. And I, f I feel like... I was influenced a lot by the modernist photographers like um, Weston, <coughs> where I was really looking for the, just that real simple lighting, but the way that it transformed, this is just um, in a tide pool, the way that the sand layered and the way that the light hit it, it transformed it into something else for me, uh, almost like a, like a stepped pyramid or some ancient ruin. You know, without having any background to uh, really give you clues, uh, it tr transforms it into something completely else, something completely other. I was also influenced by Henry Cartier-Bresson. Uh, he's a photojournalist, um, but he, he pioneered the genre of street photography, and he was known for coining the term decisive moment. And it's really that term that uh, stuck with me. My style is quite different, but um, there's just something about the fact that within a scene, or within a second, a scene can change, and it can be the difference between a strong or a weak image. It's Sometimes you just look, well, there's a combination of luck and careful observation, and when it all comes together, uh, it really magical things happen. So uh, the image on the right is uh, one of mine. I uh, love following birds on the beach on my early morning walks, and uh, I learned you can't just chase after them, they'll get all scared and run away. <laughs> so I'll find a great backdrop that I think will make a great photo, and then if I see there's a lot of birds around, I just patiently wait with my, my camera ready, and eventually they'll forget I'm there and just walk into the scene and, um, you know, the magic kind of happens after that. So um, I really think a lot of those ideas about the decisive moment uh, fall into play there. Another photographer that influenced me is Andre Kertesz. Uh, he was a photojournalist, uh, but he also created these incredible still life images. I was drawn to his clean, simple uh, compositions and the, the really deep shadows in a lot of his work. Uh, these are both images uh, by him taken at different points in his life. Uh, and the uh, image on the right is uh, from 
a body of work that he did later in his life. It was after his wife had passed away and a friend had given him a Polaroid camera. And uh, he wasn't quite as, as mobile, so he wasn't getting out as much. And he did an amazing body of work just uh, within his New York City apartment uh, with Polaroids. And uh, this exhibition was actually shown here, I think back in 2006, it might have been. And these are a lot smaller than on screen. They're probably like three by three or four by four inches. And there's just such an intimacy to them. And uh, it really stuck with me that, uh, you know, it's, a, it's important the choices you make for your camera, but great photographs can be taken with almost any type of, well, actually with any type of, of camera. And, uh, and uh, I think his work was a testament to that. So uh, this is really gonna segue into my early work with my phone, just to kind of share how I got into that. So 2008 is when I got my first iPhone. And uh, I never really thought that it would eventually become my primary camera, uh, especially with the four years of studying <laughs> photography and using every single camera out there. But, um, <laughs> but at, uh, when I got this phone, the quality was really not that great um, at the time. But I liked that it was liberating. I could go out and take photographs anywhere. And I would, I'd take them in the grocery store and walking down the street. Um, and I just created this visual journal of just everything that interested me. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't have to really plan ahead to take pictures. I didn't have to pack batteries and film and, um, or memory cards, uh, lenses. I could just, it's very lightweight and I could just take it with me. So, um, you know, with a, a really, busy career, I didn't always have as much time as I wanted to to take photos and the iPhone allowed me to continue to do that really just at this point it was just for myself. Uh, I loved finding all these interesting compositions. Um, I did go overboard when I first started because uh, Apple had so many apps that you could process your photos through. So this kind of shows that I uh, they had all of these uh, shallow focus apps and there's one that created Polaroid borders as soon as you took the photo, it would look like a Polaroid going down your screen and you'd have to shake it for it to develop in front of you. <laughs> and I just, I don't know. I've always been interested in Polaroid, so it was kind of just this nostalgic thing. So I, I think I got a lot of that out of my system early on where I just experimented with all the apps before kind of toning down how much I um, would alter the photographs. So over time, uh, things started to emerge uh, with uh, my iPhone. Images. I love the idea of documenting daily rituals. Uh, this group, group was taken around the time that I got a dog, and um, there was a spot where we would walk by this lake, and I love this tree. My, my dog liked the tree too, but for other reasons. <laughs> so we would end up stopping here, and every time I, I just took a photo, different times of day, different weather, different seasons, and um, put together this grid of images uh, that kind of shows the same location at uh, different times. And I did that with a, a number of different scenes and places that I would go to on a regular basis. And it's also just a great way of, of really noticing how the light can change, uh, you know, at different times of the day. Then in 2012, I joined Instagram. And it was at this point that instead of just creating all these images for me and not knowing what to do with it, I could actually share them with other people. And I like the format because posts are shown chronologically. So it also is like this uh, visual record of sorts. So uh, the image on the left is my first post on Instagram. Um, and the other one on the right was taken within that same month. But, uh, you know, I started regularly posting images as well. And I was able to get a lot of feedback from them. And um, I've just from scrolling through these images now, um, I can see small changes in my style or my subject matter, but also some of the consistencies and things that have stayed the same over time. So, uh, so having done this for so long, <laughs> um, it's, it's been a great tool for myself and it's also been a great way to share my images uh, with the world. So I started using Instagram and then in uh, 2016, that's when I started walking on the beach more regularly. So these are some of the early posts that I made. The one on the right is really the image that I took that led to the whole series. 
it was just the small little um, raised area of sand. The other spots had been washed away. It was, it's almost like a sculpture. And when I captured that scene, I was like, there's something more to really discover. I really need to keep this up, go walking more regularly, see what else I can find because every day there's something different and the light is different on the beach. Um, I would go very early in the morning, I'd start before the sun was even up. And uh, that really shifted my direction, even though I would still photograph everything just for myself. Um, I realized I, ha I had a body of work that was slowly evolving. So at that point, um, Arts on Douglas, where I uh, work, they had they, every year they do a summer exhibition called uh, Endless Summer. And I submitted some work. So at that point, I was like, okay, well, I wonder how these iPhone photos are even going to print. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I uh, printed, I sent some off to have them printed, but I wasn't quite happy with the results and realized I wanted to take control of the whole printing process. That was really important to me. So I invested in a really nice uh, pigment Epson printer. Uh, it has archival inks. I use that with archival papers, um, using a matte paper uh, on all of my prints. And it just makes such a difference being able to print images yourself and have the control over how, how they look um, printed. So uh, that really started this whole um, project. So these are just a few more examples from the show that I had. It just came down uh, this week, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, it's a mix of color and black and white. I. Uh, I think I've been drawn to black and white images just from starting in black and white in the dark room, and I, I just have a, a passion for it. But the, at the same time, there are some scenes that just have to be in color. You know, they just scream that they need to be in color. And um, so I've started, I do a lot of alternating between both. I can't really stick with one. So for this body of work, I mix both color and black and white images and uh, really focused on these uh, just small little moments. Uh, that I would come across on, on my walks and you know the different quality of lights in different seasons and the first one's in the winter in dense fog and the other one is um, more uh, summer light. These are two other examples. Uh, even though my, my color images are often very subdued, even though I like to use color. These are both color images, but um, they're very monochromatic, and I just love that little touch of green that's like really the only color in that one. And um, again, it's the, the details, the texture, the shadows. Um, these were taken about a year apart as well, but both in uh, close proximity, you know, so it just shows the different uh, patterns in the sand and uh, and I just, I also love how the bird footprints mimic the shadow of the plant in a way. They really play off of each other uh, in that one. These are, these are both taken in New Smyrna Beach. And by the way, uh, for this body of work, I took photos everywhere in, from Ormond Beach through New Smyrna Beach, along different parts of the beach, all through Volusia County. So I also loved mixing up my point of view. Uh, those are a little, I think, low resolution there. But um, so the image of the right just shows the vastness and the openness of the beach. But the other one is an ex extreme close up of uh, just a seashell where the waves kind of crashed over it and it collected the sea foam. Uh, but I love the way that it transforms it. That one's called Other Worlds because it felt almost like orbiting planets or something very celestial going on uh, in that scene. And then with these slides, I wanted to illustrate how um, some of the scenes I come across are really quite hidden. Um, these two images are just frames apart. And, uh, and I, in fact, the one on the left might even be somewhere in the one on the right. I'm not sure, but that's, that's really when I get out of my car and I start walking the beach, that's what I see. It's a little chaotic. There's, you know, footprints everywhere. There's all kinds of distractions. And I, once I start walking, I really hone in on details until all the other stuff kind of falls away and I start looking for patterns, but it really takes a long time to start to notice all of these little details. Um, but it becomes almost like a meditation 
for me. Uh, and uh, it really keeps me in the moment. It keeps me observing. And uh, it's just really exciting at the same time. But I just, I thought that was interesting. That was an accidental shot that I had. And it's just that you wouldn't have guessed that it's like the same <laughs> place at all. So I really, I enjoy finding uh, this order, patterns, and um, symmetries uh, really within these more chaotic scenes. And then I wanted to end with this quote because I think it really sums up why the uh, beach is such a important space for me. And um, it's by a man named Robert Preston White. And the strange thing is I was on my way to the beach one morning. I was listening to a podcast about liminal spaces, about these spaces between other spaces and times. And uh, I was really thinking about that on my walk to the beach is kind of like that. It's this transitory space that's always changing. So I just did some research um, online just to see if anyone had written anything about that. And this uh, article came up and it's from a textbook uh, for this class on uh, tourism. It's a very strange thing, but it's a really beautiful quote. So I'm just gonna read that to everyone. The beach is a place of strong magic. As a material space, it's a boundary zone where the hint of celestial forces is whispered by the ebb and flow of tides, a space that is neither land nor sea, a zone of uncertainty that resonates with the sound of ever-changing seas, a setting it that is by turn calm, tranquil, and soothing, or agitated, unruly, and frightening. As a cultural space, it's a borderland that allows both difference and hybridity while facilitating the tactile tug of land or sea to reveal for many, but not all, spaces of heightened sensibilities that are temporary, personal, and elusive. In short, liminal spaces. So at this point, I would like to open up the floor for any questions that anyone might have. I will start oh, off, okay. Juliana. Yes. We were uh, at, you, at Arts on Douglas, mm -hmm. and you use a special uh, paper to print on. Mm -hmm. You told us then. Maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about that because if you see the prints, you'll see how beautiful that, mm -hmm. that is. Yeah, so it's a matte paper and the brand that I use is called Red River. And it was actually Christina that um, told me about <laughs> this uh, brand of paper. And it's just very rich uh, with the tones that, that come from it. So the mix of that and having a, a, a nice printer really, uh, I think produces some high quality images. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was uh, mm -hmm. the the people who were with me on that walk. They will uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> say the same thing. It was just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. You uh, say you waited for the birds to come into the scene. Mm -hmm. Did you have the scene set up with a tripod, or were you just sitting? There? I'm crouching mm -hmm. down on the. You're crouching down, yeah. waiting for the. Yeah. Then yeah. You lift the camera up as they come in. Yeah, I'll usually like with that one image that I showed. I was right. really low, crouched yeah. down, and I would uh, really have yeah. my camera up and ready. Uh, it can be a little painful, <laughs> 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 but it would just be as I would see. Once I started to see the birds were walking in the direction I I wanted to photograph, that's mm -hmm. when I would hold it up and just wait, and then. Um, once they were in the spot that I thought would work, I would just take a lot of photos and look later to see which ones really worked out or were the right moments. Are you still photographing only with your cell phone? I am, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does your cell phone have have uh, numerous lenses? Uh, I mean, like mine, mine, I guess, has two. It will go a little bit closer for clo a little bit closer up. But yes. Um, I just got the iPhone 12, which does have multiple lenses, but I find that a lot of the close-up lenses the, somehow loses a little bit of quality, and sometimes it does this automatic focusing mm. for this really shallow depth of field, but it doesn't always know what to focus on, and it's, I don't think the technology is quite there yet with some of, all, some of their added features. But the one thing I will say is that uh, I, the, smaller, the smaller square images there, those, uh, a lot of those images were with my iPhone 8 and 
once I got the 12, I was able to print that larger size. So those are 15 by 15 uh, prints. Yes. Um, earlier on when you were using the earlier <coughs> iPhone, did you try any of the add-on lenses that you can uh, purchase? Like there's a auto clip has a lens that you can put mm -hmm. on. It has, does um, like macro and mm -hmm. uh, other, other um, tricks or whatever I want to call it. Yeah, know. I didn't really try didn't any try. of that. You know, I think when I first started out, I experimented with all the apps, but as I did it more, I really wanted to go simpler and really just focus on what the iPhone did best. It's, it's generally, it's a wider angle uh, lens anyway. So I would experiment a lot just to find out what works best with this type of uh, technology. You know, night images were pretty much out of the question. I uh, think you couldn't quite get too close. So I would really focus on subjects that really were in the parameters that worked best with that technology. Mm -hmm. I'm curious as the ratio between the number of photos you decide to keep and the numbers you take. <laughs> <laughs> well, for this show, I called through probably 20,000 images. <laughs> um, I just kind of went, I have them all organized by, uh, uh, by year and then by month. I try really hard to delete all the ones that are like my feet or like just complete outtakes. So they're just not in the way when I'm trying to call through them. But uh, but I had to edit that down to about 25 for this exhibition, which was incredibly hard. <laughs> and it also takes print, some images just don't print as well as others or are a lot more difficult. And uh, so uh, it was quite a long process to, to edit it down to the images that I wanted to use. Give us an idea of time. Well, actually, this was a fairly short amount of time because um, I found out in late October of last year that there was uh, an unexpected gap in the exhibition schedule. And my boss was talking to me about how to fill it. She's like, well, I know a photographer. Would you be ready for a show? And <laughs> I said, uh, it's pretty soon. <laughs> Let me think about it. But the next day I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. And it gave me that push that I needed. Um, so every day I would have a certain amount of photos that I would just go through and I'd kind of create a new folder of like potential ones to print. And then at the end of the week, I'd, I'd print some examples, see which ones worked and and uh, then figuring out all the different mat sizes and frame sizes. <laughs> so, but, um, but it was definitely a great process, even though it forced me to do it rather quickly. Um, so I now have some consistency. I know I have some standard sizes that I work with now and um, it's been really a wonderful, wonderful experience. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you, have, do you use the uh, native phone on the iPhone, or do you use the Lightroom camera or the iPhone camera? I use the native. The, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I don't. Uh, I really don't like to digitally manipulate my images after the fact. So all of the images are fairly straightforward. Um, I'm not opposed to it if. Uh, there's one tiny little imperfection. Uh, there's one image in the sh that was in the show that uh, I loved it. It was a great image, but a bird had pooped right in the middle of the scene. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I will like edit slightly there, but I'm not, you know, moving birds in from other. I just actually don't like spending that much time on the computer. And uh, yeah. Do you post edit in the, in the camera itself? I, what I do, I do some minor editing uh, when I post to Instagram using all the, the Instagram editing features. But before I print, I um, take all my files and move them into Photoshop and I'll edit uh, the light and contrast and the color balance and all that in Photoshop before I print. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I find using the iPhone, what, what bothers me the most is the pressing of the shutter. Do you have any? <coughs> Issue with that? Do you use the shutter on the screen or on the side? The camera on the side. The, on the side, okay. I use the one on the screen. I just find that to be a little bit easier than having to push in the button because sometimes it seems to stick a little bit. The yeah, there's like that little circle on the screen. And I also, there's a grid mode that you can set up and I find that to be very useful. Uh, it's in the settings somewhere. So it shows a grid so you can, it helps you keep your horizons straight and all of that fun stuff. <laughs> And is there a book in the works? I, I, this, this, is, this is fabulous for a book. I have been thinking about it. I've been just, I guess, catching my breath from the first stage. But, yeah. um, but I have so many more images that I never got a chance to show that I feel like a book format would be great, like a coffee table book. So yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah I am considering Good. that. And uh, okay. at some point, there should be one. Yes. Great.
Do you change the size of your image before you put it on Instagram? Or? On Instagram, no. I feel like Instagram automatically sizes it. Uh, when, when you post it, it sizes it down uh, to a lower resolution image. So um, I think it does all of that automatically. So I don't, yeah. <laughs> Any other? Any more questions about yeah? So you exclusively use the iPhone. You don't use um, real camera. I mean, a regular camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> Lately, um, I would probably say in the past five, five to seven years, exclusively iPhone. I had a nice digital camera, and it eventually died, and I was considering getting another one and I realized I wasn't using it that much anyway and for what I'm trying to do this technology was just it worked best best for me so uh, yeah mm -hmm. well I can say one thing uh, Juliana we had a water challenge uh, last month and mm -hmm. I was on the beach early one morning mm -hmm. and I made a Juliana picture oh, nice. <laughs> hey, this is a Juliana Thank you. So, good. You're now uh, a good, good example and an inspiration. Thank so. you so much. And thank you so much mm -hmm. for uh, being here. Mm -hmm. oh, of course. Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Yeah.